If uh, you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like you to turn them with me, please, to the book of Mark, chapter 10. And uh, I know that I had given Rich, by quotation, a book this morning. And uh, that throws him off just a little bit because that's what, not where I was going to start. Um, but I, I want to speak to you this morning uh, as a church uh, about a difference um, that you can make. And I, I want to share a story with you because have any of you all, before I get too deeply into the scripture or to the message, let me ask you, have any of you all ever uh, did something that you thought God wanted you to do or said something that you thought God wanted you to say or went somewhere that you thought God wanted you to? To go, and when you was all done, you were asking God, God, why did I do that? What difference did it make? Has anybody ever been there? I mean, because we we are a, 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 an instant oatmeal kind of people. We want to see instant results for everything that we do. I, I mean, if we preach to the multitudes, we want to see the multitudes saved instantly. Brother Gene, when him and I get an opportunity to go to breakfast, he will tell me, he will say, Preacher, just keep doing what you're doing and let God take care of the rest. I think he tells me that because he realizes I am not the most patient pastor in the world. When I do what I do, I expect, I'm no different than all of you, I expect instantaneous results from what I do. That's not always how it happens. So I want to share with you, Brother Shab this morning read the text out of Timothy that talked about preaching the word being instant in season and out of season. And what I, I want to tell you this morning is you need to always, the Bible says, be ready to give men a reason for the hope that you have down on the inside. In other words, it's not always going to be on Sunday morning in this pulpit that you may get an opportunity to preach to somebody. I want to share a story with you. Most of you all know that <clears throat> I was on vacation this week. <laughs> I'm thinking about taking three more to make up for the one I just had. However, we came down and got everything ready for the, the, the concrete that we were going to pour. And yesterday, God blessed us with an incredible weather to pour concrete in October. And, and you know, of course, we're thanking the Lord for that. But uh, the, the fella that, that delivered the concrete, the actual driver, and I'm going to tell you his name because I want you to remember it. His name is Steve French. Now, I want you to remember, Steve, and I'll explain to you why as I go on with my story. But, you know, Shad is, he's not like a backwards kind of guy. He's not bashful when it comes to the Word of God. And uh, so, you know, we're, we got concrete pours all around the church, and I, I'm, they don't give me tools when it comes to concrete. Every time I take a tool, they take it away from me. And so, you know, we're out there pouring the, the new patio sidewalk for the handicap. And, uh, you know, I'm standing there with my hands in my pocket thinking, what can I do? And all of a sudden, Steve, he gets out of his truck. He comes down around. He jumps into the concrete pour and he starts raking concrete. I thought, man, you don't, you don't see many drivers that do that. But... I took note of that. And so them fellas, they got to talking, you know, about God because that's what they do. And Shad was talking to him about the church and did he have one? And he just lives over in Prospect. And he's, well, he said, we used to go to church, but we don't go to church anymore. Something happened. I made note of that in my mind. And uh, Brother Tony said to Steve, he said, well, 
He said, if you're looking for a good church, I can tell you where to find one. I'm thinking, man, that's Tony who don't never say hardly nothing about nothing. And then Monty chimed in and got talking. I'm putting all this in my mind. And I noticed that Steve had a keen interest in what was being said about the church and about the Lord and about the people. And I, I've, I've recognized that when somebody has got a searching heart. So I waited. I had some paperwork. They give me paperwork. That's what pastors do. I went to fill out the paperwork. As I went around the building and I never knowed, Steve asked Shad, he said, so who's the pastor here? Shad said, that fella that just went around the corner with the flannel shirt on. Steve said, he don't look like no pastor I've never seen. <laughs> you know, because I, I had on my rubber boots, I was in the muck, I was pulling the concrete. I was cutting boards, doing all those. And Shad told him, he said, he got the same tools in his truck that you got yours. Steve took note of that. I never knew that conversation took place. I got my paperwork filled out. Steve went out back to clean out his truck and all of the fellas was busy and I waited on purpose because I wanted an opportunity to talk to Steve by himself. So while he was cleaning out his truck, I walked out back and I just stood there. When he finally got down, and him and I, we got talking about the church and he said, you know, he, he said, it's good to see a little church like this doing good. I said, we do all right. Then I, you know how it is because I don't need much to tell the story. We are sitting out back on the parking lot that we didn't used to have. He drove down the driveway that didn't used to be there. I began to tell him about the church praying for that property when we had no money. And I said, I don't know, know why I was telling Steve. I'm just telling the story. I said, but let me tell you how God works. I said, there was a lady in the congregation that morning that I told the church to pray. I said, and she went home. She told her mister and they began to pray. I said, and a couple weeks later, they called and said they wanted to donate what we needed to buy. He said, what? He said, those kinds of things don't happen. <laughs> it gets better. You all need to hear this story. I'm spending my preaching time telling it. Finished talking with Steve and gave him one of the cards. You know, done all the things the pastor does. We are still working around here. About an hour later, maybe a little longer, that was another Hensel's Creek truck that pulled into the parking lot. Another fellow whom I didn't know got out. He said, I'm looking for the pastor. I was thinking you're all's credit card bounced. <laughs> I didn't know. I said, that would be me. He said, yeah, I figured you was. He said, I drove over here because I want to share something with you. I said, okay. He said, the young man that was here, I said, Steve. He said, yes. He said, he came back to the concrete plant. I'm going to have a hard time telling the rest of this. I don't know if I'm getting a preacher just testify. He said, he came back over to the plant and he said, this fellow's name is Rodney Rodney said, I, I was in the break room doing my Bible study. And he said, Steve, come back. And he finished cleaning out his truck. And then he just came into the break room and he just stood there. 
He said, finally, I looked up from my Bible and I said, Steve, is everything okay? And he said, Steve, look back at me. And he said, I don't know. Rodney said, what do you mean? <sighs> Steve said, there's something happening at that church. There is something that's going on there. And he said, I, I don't know what it is and I don't understand it. He said, but there's something that's going on there. Rodney said, I, I had to come tell you. He said, I looked at Steve and he said, Steve, you don't know this, but when you left the plant this morning, he said, I prayed for you. And he said, I prayed that when you got over there, that there, instant in season and out. He said, I, I prayed that when you got there, that there would be something that would happen that would penetrate your heart. Steve said, I don't know, I don't understand, I don't know what to do. Rodney got out of his truck. And he told me, he said, Pastor, he said the story that you told him about the driveway and the land. I never waxed eloquent about everything else. I just was telling him how God was providing our needs. He said, when you told him that, he couldn't get over. And he said, I don't understand why that somebody would do that. Now I'm about to preach or preachify. Rodney looked back at Steve and he said to Steve, he said, Steve, that lady was in that congregation four years ago for you today. Amen. Steve said, what are you talking about? He said, she was there four years ago so that they could do what they did so that that pastor would be able to tell you today what God did then so it would penetrate your heart. May I tell you, if God is asking you to do, just do because you do not know when God is going to make opportunity for what you do to change a life down the road. So he told Steve, he said, to Steve, he said, now Steve, he said, I'm not going to preach at you anymore. He said, you know what you need to do. You know you need to be saved. And he said, if you've got questions and you don't want to talk to me, he said, go talk to that pastor. <laughs> now, here's the thing. About an hour maybe, if it had been that long, after Steve had left here. We didn't know what was going on in Marengo at the concrete plant. But Roger and Ryan brought sausage muffins and coffee and they said, preacher, would you pray so we can eat? I began to pray and as I began to pray, Steve came to my mind. And I said, Lord, would you bless Steve, whether it's here or whether it's somewhere else, would you let something happen so that Steve would understand that he needs to be saved? I talked to Rodney and as best that we can, whoo, <laughs> as best that we can figure it out, our conversation with God out back by the patio when there wasn't nobody else around except a few country fellows that had poured some concrete. Our conversation was God, with God was taking place the same time that Steve and Rodney was talking in Marengo. You say, well, preacher, 
You ought not get excited about something like that. Steve didn't get saved. Not yet. <laughs> he told, he told I, I'm telling you, I know I made an impression on him because he said, I ain't never seen a pastor like that. <laughs> if you got your Bibles, I want to I wanna speak to you this morning. Out of Mark chapter 10, I, I want to read something because you need to recognize that what you do makes a difference. You may not see it. You may not feel it. Although I got to tell you, Yesterday, when Rodney was telling me the story in the parking lot, I was feeling it. Yesterday afternoon, when I was sharing it with Shad, he was feeling it. I think when he told his dad, they was probably feeling it. You say, well, preacher, it's not all about feeling. No, but it feels good when you can feel it. Mark chapter 10. I want to read in verse 46, a very familiar passage of scripture to you. The Bible says, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind, with a great number of people, the Bible said, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Now watch this. Verse 47, where I want to start this morning. In verse 47, it says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. Now, I, I gotta tell you, I, I think first of all this morning, we need to understand that sometimes when we don't recognize it and we don't realize it, there is somebody that is listening for Jesus to pass by. Now, I, I gotta tell you, they didn't find blind Bartimaeus in the temple. They didn't find him in a church pew on Sunday morning, but rather the scripture says that he was by the highway. He laid there and he was begging, crying, and everybody told him, said, be still. But when he heard that it was Jesus, he began to cry. You know what? I want Steve, I want him to know. I, he may not understand it. Gene, you may not understand it. I may not understand it. But he said it the best when he said to Rodney, he said, there is something that's going, I don't know, I'll tell you what, what I want him to understand is what's going on here is not about this preacher or the fellas that are pouring concrete, but we are pouring concrete for the king of glory. And the Bible says, even on Saturday morning, if there's two or three of you that assemble in my name, I will be in the midst wherever we get together somebody is listening for the Lord to come by. Bartimaeus when he heard it was Jesus the Bible said that he began to cry out and I got to tell you and I told Rodney he drove all the way over here just to tell us that what we were doing was making a difference in Steve's life. I got to tell you I don't know the amount of people that we may have got an opportunity to share the gospel with that we may never ever know whether or not uh, that that individual gives their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, but when they hear that it's Jesus uh, the Bible said there uh, that he began uh, to cry out I've got to tell you yesterday uh, that young man uh, when he was here and Shad began to talk to him just casual conversation there was something in his voice that you could tell that his heart was searching for the Lord Jesus Christ. As somebody, I've got to tell you what, when people are listening, we need to be ready. Because somebody say, well, you know, preacher, we can't always talk about the Lord. <laughs> Why not? Let me ask you a crazy question. When is a bad time to talk about him? Oh, preacher, you're too plain. 
Maybe I am, but when is a bad time to talk about the Lord? There is somebody that is listening. I, I, got, I got to thinking about this polling thing, this voting station thing that they want to use the church for. And Roger, and, and I got to tell you, I, I got to be careful preaching about Roger because there is a lady down at the, the nursing home that views our videos. And whenever I get on Roger, Sandy gets on me. Somebody's listening. They're not always in the church. Sometimes they're in a nursing home. Sometimes they're in a hospital. Sometimes they may come to vote, but Roger said, preacher, do you think it'd be all right? Maybe he said, I think I'll just take the day off. And he said, maybe I'll stand down there. And when they come in and when they go out, I will talk to them and try to give them something about the church. You say, oh, well, you know, preacher, you ought not bother them when they're getting ready to vote. You ought not bother them when they're doing what I gotta tell you, when is a bad time to bother somebody about the Lord and tell them that they need to be saved? Somebody's listening to what you're saying. I, I began to think about blind Bartimaeus as he cried out and he began and the multitude of people began to look at him and said, shh, don't get carried away. How many of y'all ever get carried? Now be careful, don't raise your hand unless you mean this, because I told somebody the other day, I said, God's listening. How, how many of y'all have ever found yourself about to get carried away in the Lord? <laughs> uh oh, now the preacher just talking about getting excited. Well, you know, the multitude told Bartimaeus, he said, be still, don't bother the master. But Bartimaeus understood